presentation as it is a story, and it is a story of heroism. And it's not my heroism, it's um, heroism of a colleague of mine, uh, Jeremy Jones, who actually just had his first child two days ago. So that's why he's not here. Um, so I, I told him at the time that this was the stuff of like lyric poetry, um, but I didn't have time to write it. Um, so who here, so everyone showed their hands for core files, just hold them up and tell them, you put them down when you're done here. So. Um, uh, M who's, who's debugged from core files, who's debugged using MDB, who's debugged using MDB on the kernel, who's debugged using MDB on a live kernel KMDB, who's debugged using KMDB on a live kernel diving into a process. Come on, colon, colon, context. Who's actually used it? Who's I debugged the problem? <laughs> successfully. Oh, successfully. Oh, successfully. Oh, successfully. Successfully. Yeah. Right. Oh, no, well, one hand remains. I once dug out a stack. And yeah, <laughs> and uh, I'll show you. So um, as Brian, um, as Brian was mentioning earlier, um, these problems when um, when you actually dump a core, or dump a crash them, are in some ways easier. You can spend a lot of time um, thinking about it and, and sifting through it and building new analysis tools. When you have a problem where there is no crash dump or there's no core file, um, it can be just brutal. We had one of these at Delphix. Oh, um, I'm Adam Levithal. I work at Delphix. We had one of these problems at Delphix where we would hang very early in boot. Too early to get a core file, too early to send an NMI. We sent in uh, KMDB, um, found out that startd was hanging, uh, sent in <laughs> colon colon context. So this is super early in boot. Um, and just to, to feel a little bit of, the, bit of the pain, I want to show off colon colon context um, and, and show what it's like. So um, I'm, I'm just here, uh, can, can folks see this more or less. Um, I, I'm here uh, on you know one part of the systems, not being able to type. Um, and we're going a dump. So this is a dump I've created um, for the purpose of this talk. And I have all both the kernel pages and the user pages in there. So the first thing you do is you say, uh, whoops, you tab complete, which works. Thank you, um, thank you Rob and, and Matt Amder. Um, and it's great. Um, so I look for start D and I run colon colon context. So now I'm in this process. So let's look at the stack. Nope. And let's look at the registers. Also no. And maybe <laughs> these other things work, but they don't. <laughs> so that's, that's, that's step one to using colon colon context, remembering how horrible it is. Then you don't know how to get out of it, so you Start again. <laughs> and you, is, is there a way to get out of it? Does anyone know? So you, you grab start D again, and then you walk the threads. Uh, walk the thread. Zero colon colon context. Really? Oh, yeah. that. All right. Learn something that I hope to never use. Uh, <laughs> and I'm going to print my K thread T. I'm going to tab complete this guy because I can. Um, and L to P regs. And I'm going to print. Rigs. Oh god. <laughs> Start. Oh god. I'm in the bad place. <laughs> regs. Resize your terminal. Yep. I'm going to print regs and I'm going to do R, R, T. So now I've got the registers that I wanted. Now I'm ready to call and call in context. <laughs> uh, and I can. Text sugar right now? <laughs> And yeah, exactly, just syntactic sugar. So now I'm going to take these, and because I know how extracts are constructed, I can walk the stack on my own, right? No problem. No problem. Easy. And then, and then I can disassemble this stuff because these are just instructions, uh, and I can disassemble it. But I, I forgot that actually this is a 32-bit process, so that I have to remember all the stuff I did a million years ago. Uh, this asms, which is a command, this mode, IA32, so I'm switching to look at IA16 added by me. <laughs> Great. Use IA16. Made that IA16 support. <laughs> I'm not crazy! <laughs> <laughs> and so now I've, I've basically spent a lot of time remembering how to do stuff and still getting nowhere. So this is where, where my colleague Jeremy got, um, and except for he was doing it with KMDB, which is even more horrible. Um, so then, um, Jeremy, this is where I would have, uh, I should mention, I, I, I have a small role in this story, uh, and it's coming up, but it, it might not be where you expect. So um, 
Jeremy um, just pursued this doggedly, and um, and we didn't kind of know where he went at night, but it turns out where he was going was into this this very um, strange place. So um, we run all of our stuff inside of VMware, and um, VMware has this tool called VMSS to core. And you can take the live, uh, basically the, the memory state of your VM and produce a, core, uh, a crash dump from it. It's kind of amazing, actually. Um, it never didn't work um, on Solaris, on versions of Solaris that we were using, or versions of Lumos that we were using, because it was built for like Solaris 2.6 or something. Um, and um, whatever, we're, we're recording, but I will deny this in the future, it was being recorded. We like stole a version from inside of VMware. We had some friends who like sent us the good stuff, and you know, so we, we produced it, but it didn't have the pages we needed. So Jeremy discovered this thing called volatility. Uh, has anyone ever heard of volatility before? It is a, one of these awesome open source tools. Do you ever, you ever feel like um, you like write down six things and put them on a card and there's like some open source project that combines all of them? This is a thing that takes things from Zen or VMware or KVM and processes those memory images and emits it in whatever other memory image type that you like. So it takes like KVM state and produces like a Linux crash dump. And like, wow, I, who, who did this? But it's, it is awesome. And so what Jeremy did is he wrote 2,000 lines of, of Python code to take the, this volatility, what volatility gave him, which would process the VMware uh, VMSS file, the snapshot of, of that state, and produced a, um, a kernel, uh, a, a, a Lumos crash dump. Um, let's see if I can pull that up just so that you can uh, see how amazing that is. So it is just like line after line of like uh, deciphering kernel uh, structures and pulling them apart and spitting out elf and um, and creating this crash dump. And Jeremy's just like, oh yeah, I did that. That is like rocket surgery, just just right there. <laughs> <laughs> um, but that, that so that got us to the point where we had the crash dump with all the user pages, but it still didn't solve the problem. So then, Jeremy um, ascended the, this mountain that I have walked past, you know, hundreds of times. It is Kong Kong G Core Mountain, and this this is the the dream of taking a crash dump, which you know has all of the information that you want and producing a core file so you can just use those tools that you already know how to use and you don't have to suffer through clone clone context. And it, it you know, when I, when I pitched it to him, um, it was, it was, um, it was like, oh, you know, we have, we have libproc and it knows how to create a core file and we have MDB and it knows how to look at processes. So all you have to do is stick those together. Is that, is, is how I conned him into doing the thing that I had deemed too much of a pain in the ass for like, 10 years of my career, maybe longer. Um, anyway, I, don't, I won't have a show of hands of how many people have talked to or heard me talk about Kong Kong G Core over the course of my career. So um, what he did was he first vectorized libproc, and then he created this translation layer, and he, and he, um, and he invoked this facility in libproc that I added many years ago called PG Core, which creates a core file from this PSproc handle. Now you're thinking, this is where I'm gonna claim credit for like starting the whole thing. This is not where I entered the story. So um, I'll show you Jeremy's version of MDB. Uh, here, uh, one. Now, Jeremy's like in the hospital with his wife, so I kind of am doing this a little bit without his permission, except for some text file. He's like, if you can, I mean, some text message. If you can find it, he said, I can demo it. So I found it. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got, uh, again, start D, and I'm going to run it just through. And this is some debug code, but at the end of it, what we get is a core file. And I can go to that core file, core.service.startd48, and I can run it. And it is like a whole functioning core file that we ripped out of, like from the clutches of VMware, through this volatility thing, into a crash dump. So I want to point, Jeremy, by the, at this point, has written like, thousands, if not maybe like 10,000 lines of code to debug this one problem. And now this is where I come to the story. <laughs> because I introduced the bug. <laughs> <laughs> and it turned out to be like a 10 line fix. Um, so uh, 
this, um, you know, to, to just kind of wrap this up, um, this I think is one of the most amazing feats of, of building tools out of anger um, you know, to, to, to solve this um, problem that was otherwise just nearly impossible to debug. I would say possibly impossible to debug, just based on the amount of time we had all kind of spent thinking about and investigating, um, and the power of, of these right tools. So thank you, Jeremy. What are the alt stuff? Uh, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll show you that. So, like, you can run. I mean, I'd love to see what uh, Some of it is a little faked up. I mean, what did you want? P flags? I think they're just adjust well, I've done that. But I, I, yeah, I mean, any P two is a miracle, obviously. Oh yeah, exactly. So, P files are. Yep. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, You, you have like a bunch of you know stuff. Um, <laughs> do you have developed it? Uh, I don't. Know, probably not because we don't. Because we. I, I bet this is going to be picked up. So you have some stuff you don't have all. You don't have like the stuff that you need to send in the get. We could totally plan. But part that. of this we need to. I think what we need to do with the key files is write it so it's not sending the agent. So there's there's a um, there's like a slash proc primitive that that we could use to, to fake all this stuff up. Um, but what Jeremy effectively had to do is take a lot of slash proc code and reproduce it in MDB. All of the marshalling of kernel data structures into the the stable data structures um, that we that the debuggers consume. Any other things you guys want to see? What what ultimately was the problem? The problem, actually, the problem was um, was pretty fascinating. The problem, so I'll blame Java to begin with. Let me just start. From there. <laughs> so um, there is a problem that, in fact, um, I, I standing right here as I was telling Brian this for the first time as he was debugging this problem. So um, recent versions of the J math problem, by the way. <laughs> oh, really? I, 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 I was going to say Java. Your fucking Elastic Search problem. It all, it's uh, all coming together. So, <laughs> so um, uh, the JVM, for whatever reason, is compiled in a way where um, the JStack helper is not sent out to the kernel. The JStack helper is what's, what lets dtrace understand what Java stack traces look like from any point. Um, so frustratingly, they, they basically compiled this thing wrong, and arguably, we kind of messed up the way that um, you embed these these helper descriptions, or, or it's confusing, or, the, or whatever, or the dog ate the JVM homework or something. So I wrote this um, this thing called an audit library, where you attach it to the JVM when you run it, so that it sends down the information that the kernel needs um, forcibly. So anytime you run Java, um, we go and grab, Datrace is able to get the information that it needs. In doing that, I found a problem with all audit libraries. So audit libraries are a facility in the Illumos linker and the Solaris linker. And this is a problem that has existed since the beginning of audit libraries. They just like can't work by design. In particular, there's a race condition between the um, the allocator that you need to have for your audit library and like forks. I know this is incredibly esoteric, but it's it is it's one of these nasty problems, um, and it just it never worked. So I came up with a solution, which also totally broken by design. It got us by this this kind of proximate issue. But the, the basic problem is, uh, is that audit libraries just need to be treated much more special. So um, what we, we did is went in and changed it so that like audit libraries can't fork, they can't create threads, and they can't participate in um, like fork safety because they're already implicitly fork safe. And, and uh, just the uh, GNU guys also took audit libraries. Well. Oh, really? They took it lock, stock, and barrel. There. My guess is that it's broken. My guess, no, it is broken. They, they took all I mean, it's like, so for example, every example in the Sun Linkers and Libraries Guide, like, will dev on. <laughs> for example. Okay. Any other questions? Other stuff I can show you about this MIT crash stuff? Yeah, Adam. Is this one of these bugs you could have found if you had done a binary search on your commit history? Huh. Um, no, because it wasn't a reproducible boot hack. Um, it was one of, in, it was, it was like most of these pathological boot hangs, like the, the harder you thought about it, like the less you could reproduce it, you know, like the week when you're like, guys, let's just solve this, no one would hit it. 
and then we well, thought maybe we'll just never hit this again. Yeah, exactly. And you would hit it every time. It's like a play. Well, like surely no customer would hit it. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> you know that that. We built infrastructure to like save the VMs that were hung, so that they, Jeremy could go back and look at them later. Yeah. So. Um, there might have been some of that, but it's also one of these squirrely things that it's like a timing thing. And you're, um, and you never know, is is it this thing that's actually chasing away? Is it actually gone? Or so again, yeah, so answer maybe, but no. <laughs> <laughs> I just thought that would have been a very ironic end to it. <laughs> yeah. Um, sorry. Great. Uh, thank you. And Matt, do you want to? Uh,